Hello and welcome to Art Masters with me, Mrs. Portia. Today we are going to be learning about a Series 1 artist for Art Masters. We're going to learn a little bit of history about this artist. We're going to see some slides of their work and we're going to see a little glimpse of what this month's art project will be. How many of you like posters? Do you have any posters in your room? Why do performers have posters? It's to make themselves known or to advertise. So today we're going back in time more than a hundred years to learn about a man in France who was very famous for his posters. He made performers, restaurants, and nightclubs popular with his artwork before photographs were used for posters. We're gonna look at his posters and paintings and discover why he has remained famous through all these years as a master artist. So who's ready to meet the real Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec? So this is a photograph self-portrait. And like I said, at the time, photography, very, very new. So Lautrec had some fun experimenting with it. His family was very wealthy and made its mark on French history. They, he had princes, dukes, counts, and knights in his family. His mother's family had a great sense of business and they had a lot of large estates in France. So he was born in November 1864, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec. They named him after Henry V and they had a magnificent ceremony for his baptism with lots of fancy clothes. As he grew older, his mother still enjoyed dressing him in beautiful clothes. She was very well educated and excelled in Latin literature and spoke fluent English. So she made sure that Lautrec went to the best schools and spoke English and French as well. His father, on the other hand, was first and foremost a lover of fun. So the Lautrec family spent their days riding, hunting, fishing, playing games, and eating lavish meals prepared by the family's 16 servants. I told you he was wealthy. He always seemed to be interested in art. When he was very young, he loved to draw animals, and there were plenty to draw right at his home. His father kept ferrets, horses, dogs, and many kinds of birds. But when Lautrec was about 14 years old, he fell from a low chair in the chateau and broke his left leg. It took months to heal and he was never able to ride again. Just after it got healed, guess what happened? He fell and broke his right leg. After that, his fragile leg stopped growing and he was crippled for the rest of his life. So he wasn't able to use his legs. He kept his interest in outdoor activities alive by drawing and painting the things that he loved. Soon, Lautrec's parents allowed him to go to Paris to study art. He learned all he could in the studios of some of the best-known artists in Paris. Here we have a portrait of Van Gogh, and this is actually pastel on cardboard. Vincent would later become a famous art artist, too. We're actually going to do um, a Vincent Van Gogh project in Art Masters. So he made this portrait of his friend Van Gogh sitting at a cafe, and people think that this is one of the best portraits of Van Gogh ever made. He was able to show Van Gogh's intense personality. Lautrec also used Van Gogh's technique of cross strokes and some of his favorite colors. Being able to show people in real life situations was one of Lautrec's greatest talents. Most artists in that time just painted pictures of people posing in their best clothes. Remember, photography was very new. Lautrec wanted to show more about the person than just what they looked like. He would often take a sketchbook to the circus and sketch the performers in action. This is an oil on canvas of the circus. Lautrec found circus people very interesting to paint, much more than the wealthy people he was used to seeing. Just like the circus, there are many things happening at the same time. Let's point out some things that are happening. There's a rider riding side saddle about to jump the horse through the paper ring held by the clown. Now the clown is cropped, so you can't really see the top of his head. There's the ringmaster with the whip. There's another clown dancing off to the left. And there's two men kind of in the background with another whip. So one element that ties this whole painting together is line. The line of the whips and the line of the ringside Keep your eye moving in a circle. So if you notice the ringmaster's whip is pointing to the horse and then the horse's head is pointing to the two gentlemen wearing black 
And they have another whip that's pointing towards the clown that takes you right back to that ringmaster. So that's a technique to keep your eye always moving around the painting. Also, he learned that trick from Degas, another favorite artist. This painting was bought and hung in the entrance hall of the Moulin Rouge, a famous nightclub and dance hall. He would sit for hours in the club sketching the entertainers and the exciting people he met. Then he would take his sketches to a studio and make the paintings and posters. Here, Lautrec is working on one of his larger paintings of the Moulin Rouge in his studio. He formed a select group of writers, artists, scientists, and sportsmen who enjoyed eating well. They met in restaurants and occasionally Lautrec cooked for them. He was a very artistic chef, serving flaming dishes, inventing spicy sauces, and adding wine to almost everything. He hated the taste of water, and to prevent anyone from drinking it, he would put goldfish in all of the water jugs. I bet that worked. His family wasn't too happy about his spending so much time in the nightclubs. So they put him on an allowance, but that did not keep him from painting the interesting life he found in the nightclubs and dance halls. Now let's see the finished version of the painting that he's working. This is oil on canvas, and this is at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Lautrec is again using lines to draw our attention to the back of the hall. So the diagonal lines on the floor are farther, apart, are farther apart in the front of the painting, and then they're closer together in the back, which is giving us perspective, and it's actually pointing our eye almost to that dancing couple. So Lautrec used another trick of perspective and has also placed the large figures low on the canvas, which shows that they're closer to us. And when people are far away from us, they appear smaller. Are there any people that are cropped? I see this man on the left with a hat. He's cropped off and this couple over here on the right. And again, that's giving us um, more of the feel like it's a photo. Like if we use our very observing artist eyes, we will see a yellow wash on the floor. Lautrec wanted to show how the gas lights, you could see those in the background, they're kind of floating, seem to give everything a yellow glow. Lautrec has applied his yellow paint very thinly. Where else does the paint appear to be thinly applied? Let's look around. I would say on the ladies' dresses and the gentlemen's coats. Lautrec used thin washes of color more often than thick strokes of color. He also experimented with painting oil directly onto cardboard. The Moulin Rouge became one of his favorite subjects, inspiring 30 paintings, lithographs, and the most famous of all his posters, Moulin Rouge. So this is at the Moulin Rouge, another oil on canvas. And this painting started out to be much smaller with just the central group of figures included. If you ever get to go to the Art Institute in Chicago, you could see the original painting. And you may notice that Lautrec had added two strips of canvas to enlarge the work along the bottom and the right. Now the people seated are Lautrec's friends and performers from the club. Gabriel, his cousin and best friend, could be seen walking across the stage in the background. The short gentleman beside him is Toulouse Lautrec himself. The face on the right is, is lit differently from below. The trek has given a strange glow to the face to surprise us, much as we might be surprised if we were actually there. Now, is he using perspective again? Yes, I think he is. He's using the diagonal line of the bar on the left and the lines on the floor that are wider in the front and narrower in the back, which is drawing our eye towards the back, and the larger figures in front and the smaller figures in back. So it's giving us some depth and perspective. Now, even though Lautrec was an excellent painter, one of the best of his time, he was more famous for his posters. Now, excuse my French, but this is Aristide Bruant at Les Ambassadeurs, hopefully. So how is this poster technique different from his painting? Well, I'd say it's simpler, right? More basic shapes, more bold colors, and I'm noticing more line and outlines. Some things that may look the same, he's still using thin washes of color. He shows us personality as well. And if you look carefully, you could see a shadow of a figure in the background. Lautrec used this technique often in his posters. He put smaller silhouettes of figures higher in the background. Many people believe that the silhouette is of Lautrec himself because he often wore a nautical cap like the one pictured. 
If you go to the San Diego Museum of Art to see this poster, you'll be amazed how bright the colors are. He created these bright colors by splattering several colors together instead of using just one. For example, that cape is made of black, red, and blue, and he applied it through splattering the colors through a strainer. Soon, poster makers everywhere were using Latrec's bright colors to get attention. So when a new nightclub called Devon Japonaise was open, Latrec was hired to paint a poster to advertise it. Just like his paintings, Latrec included many things happening at the same time. There's the dancer, Jane Avril. She's seating in front, holding a fan. The cropped figure on the right is a famous writer. During the time, the Japanese style and Art Nouveau style of decorating were very popular. So Latrec skillfully used these elements both in his poster to stay with the times. The white face of the central figure against the dark hat was taken from a Japanese print. This poster had an immediate success and the newspapers at the time declared it Latrec's posters have conquered the streets of Paris. All of Latrec's posters were produced by the process of lithography. In making a lithographic print, an artist draws the image on a special slab of limestone. Chemicals are used to make the drawing stick. When water is spilled, only the limestone absorbs it. The crayon lines repel it. Kind of like if you've ever done a watercolor and crayons, the crayons repel it. Ink is rolled onto the drawing and sticks only to the lines so that when a sheet of paper is placed on the stone and passed through a press, a precise copy of the drawing is transferred in reverse onto the paper. Color lithographs are created by using a different stone for each color. So the poster you see in the lower left-hand corner has been printed twice, one for the yellow shapes and once for the red shapes. The middle poster has had the black added and the final poster has had the green added. As you can imagine, much time and measuring is required to make the separate colors line up. Lithography was discovered by accident when someone copied a grocery list onto a piece of limestone with crayon. When they spilled water on it, they noticed the water wet the stone, but not the waxed crayon lines. So you never know what could happen or be discovered by your accidents. So thousands of these of posters could be printed by this process. So huge printing presses like the one we see here, and this was an 1894 Paris factory. Um, they used them to produce posters. The Trek printed 30 to 3,000 posters of each image. Before long, his posters became so valuable that as soon as they went up, they would be stolen. He made many sketches in charcoal, chalk, or oils to plan for the composition and colors for each poster. So this is a study for an unfinished post poster of Yvette Gilbert. This sketch was made for the singer and it was rejected. Latrec had captured all of her traits, her trademark black gloves, her long neck. These were things pe that people would remember about her. Latrec did have a great sense of humor and it is widely believed that because she rejected this poster, Latrec purposefully showed her without her head in that Japanese poster that we saw earlier. Hmm. A few years later, she realized how famous other performers were becoming because of Latrec's posters. So she hired him to create another one. Now, this poster, this sketch for the poster was made for the Moulin Rouge. Here he sketched the bold lines and simple shapes that he planned to use for the poster. This was his first poster that he created for the Moulin Rouge. And if you're ever in Montmartre, France, you could go to the Moulin Rouge because it's still there today, probably due to Latrec's poster. It was one of the grandest, wildest place of entertainment and Latrec's favorite spot to sketch exciting people. Another interesting character Latrec liked to sketch is this Irish singer, singer May Belfort. Now, who can tell me if this is a poster or an oil painting? Hmm. This is an oil painting, and the reason why is it's more detailed, even though this isn't the greatest print of the slide, it's more detailed, not as bold of colors, right? There's also some depth and perspective in this painting that's not in most of his posters. Um, in this painting, he used a technique that almost appears to be pastels, but it's actually oil. It is a grisaille on cardboard, which a grisaille is a monochrome, a monochrome painting and drawing technique. So he would have developed the work in shades of gray and then used thin washes of oil to add the color. 
So this is a lithograph in four colors. Lautrec was asked to produce this poster for Jane Avril to advertise her act at the Palace Theatre in London. The dance troupe would be dancing their version of the Can-Can. How does Lautrec show depth and perspective in this poster? Well, we have, you can't really see them, but there are some lines on the floor. And we have our bigger figures in the front as they go smaller into the back, creating our perspective. We also have some repeated shapes, creating a feeling of movement. There's also fun movement within the lines. The lines seem to dance just like the dancers. Jane Avril liked the poster so well, she hired Lautrec to create another of her alone. Many people think this is Lautrec's most unforgettable poster. Lautrec painted his friend Jane in plain dress with a snake design on it. This was a popular design at the time. Mysteriously, this poster was never publicly displayed. Unfortunately, Lautrec's lifestyle at the nightclubs and dance halls took its toll, and at age 35, he looked much older than he was. He was too tired to paint. His family was concerned, and doctors advised treatment. Not too much later, he died at the very early age of 37. The world lost a very talented artist. No one else would ever paint Paris quite the same again. So for this Art Masters project, we will be doing posters just like Lautrec, and we'll be using our line, big bold shapes, and washes of color to create these exciting posters. So I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, and we look forward to our project with Art Masters posters.